a day that we cry out for the world, the nations around the world. For some nations have never, they've never given their permission for things like this to be happening in the world. But this is a day of 9-11s. It's a day of it. It's a week of it. It's a day we must stop things in prayer. We must begin to pray a, a hedge of protection around God's people, around the world. For things are very serious right th this moment and very dangerous today. And so we have to pray. And we didn't plan on this today. We didn't plan any of this today. I heard one chord I thought the Lord wanted me to play, and it turned out to sound differently. And then he turned the whole program to intercession because we couldn't, you don't just plan groanings in the spirit. You have to let him lead you into that. But this is, this is a time when the world thinks all is lost. This is a time when, so to speak, Lazarus has been dead four days and surely he stinks. There's no way to bring him back. And Jesus said, where have you laid him? Roll the stone away. Scripture said he groaned in the spirit. He groaned and he said, Father, I know that you hear me. Before he even got there, he said, you always hear me. He said, for their sake, I said, Lazarus is dead. Then he gets to the place where, where his sisters are. They said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He said, he told one of the sisters, he said, do you believe that your brother will rise again? He, they said, yea, Lord, at the last day in the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. The resurrection is a person, not a time and place. And when that person arrives on the scene, it takes place. Because he is the resurrection. When he rose from the dead, he embodied the whole resurrection. He took it with him and brought it up with him so that he is the resurrection. He came for that. He came full of resurrection power. He, the fullness of God dwelled in him bodily. He came in full resurrection power. And when he went into hell and paid the price and rose again after three days and nights, he had never lost the resurrection power and he came back up out of that tomb, out of hell itself. And today, when all seems lost around the world, and you know, I'm going to say something here, and I really don't want to hear anybody say anything else again about that, is that the Ukrainian people are some of the most precious people on the planet you see, there, there's God's people all over the Ukraine. When I talk about things like Nazis, I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about the government. Right. Folks, there's a big lie and a big show going on right now, and it's all for one end. Now you have Canada saying, there's no reason for any citizen to own certain firearms. No reason for it. Yes, there is. You are the reason. You're the reason they should own them. You're the very reason they should do it. Soon, the next thing they have on their agenda, they cannot bring to pass unless they disarm the people. They must disarm people. Or they can't bring the next part to pass. And so now they're speaking, they're spewing out their narrative everywhere. This is all a lie. And how deep does that lie go? You know, Jesus said, if your eye be full of darkness, how great is the darkness? 
this is all a big lie and this whole world is on a stage of reality lies reality shows reality shows basically mean part truth and part lie and they're killing people the innocent people evangelists are on the ground in the ukraine right now and this is their report with no reason for them to lie a report came to me the other day that there's no reason for this evangelist to lie he said they're killing their own people it's a big lie it's a big show to bring about one new world order surely brother robin they wouldn't do such things around the world and hurt people government our government surely wouldn't hurt us would they really you surely don't believe that in the scripture the most wicked leader that ever existed or ever will is when the beast when the antichrist himself becomes in power and he will cut people's heads off if they do not receive his mark now how do you think governments wouldn't kill for their own reasons to promote their own agenda sure they will the, the beast himself the antichrist himself will cut people's heads off play a little bit please just yeah see i was talking again to a man yesterday that i first received the report from <clears throat> Back when ISIS, ISIS was on the scene in, in great visibility. You would see them riding down the roads across the ocean in their lands where they were trying to terrorize. They would ride down the road with new, brand new Toyota pickups with machine guns mounted in the back of them. And me talking to a man who was driving trucks in those days. And he said there would be people from those places coming across American soil in their trucks with Toyotas, brand new ones on the back of them, going to the southern border. And someone would come pick them up, carrying them overseas. Who would let such a thing roll through this country? Look who was president at the time, and you will know. Folks, you're dealing with an awful, sinister lie. So how deep does that lie go? As deep as it takes, belched out of the belly of hell itself. Yes, I will, Lord. The Lord has said this to me. He said, you politicians that knew you could have stopped this. Now, would you listen close to what I'm going to say? The Lord said, it's one thing when you were lying and moving things around for your own gain, for political power, vying for positions to get elected so that you didn't get thrown out on your fat rear ends where you had to work somewhere and you would just do whatever it took to stay in power the Lord said that was one thing but it's another thing when you decided to seek the occult and when you decided to seek false gods and join yourself to paganism and gods false gods to bring about the demise of my people in the dark realms and bring it upon the earth that's another thing entirely and it did not go unnoticed by heaven it just did not where do you stand now i'm speaking to politicians and don't think they're not listening either where do you stand where do you stand? Are you going to die like that? Are you going to draw your last breath knowing that you betrayed the living God? 
Are you going to draw your last breath, you politicians around the world? Are you going to draw your last breath knowing you betrayed the God of heaven and earth? That you betrayed him and you go down in history and you go down recording it against you in the annals of eternity that you were like Paul Potts, that you were like Joseph Stalling, that you murdered people, that you were like these dictators that just killed their own people. Are you willing to draw your last breath and bank and count on the fact that you don't believe there's an eternal punishment for that? Are you willing to die without Jesus? Do you believe in your lies and your paganism and your and you really look in the mirror and think you came here from some kind of explosion from a particle in time and you can't even define where the time came from are you willing to die that way there was a song comes back to my mind and it was a video that i had saw from a man of god it was carmen that put it out and he put it out about a real man of God who really lived and still alive today who faced a warlock. And he told that warlock, he said, when that warlock started bragging, I can make you rich. I can curse someone to death. I paid this, I was paid to curse this man with AIDS by his aunt. That was in the song. And he said, I could make you rich or even curse someone to death with my understanding of the dark realm. He said, what can your God do to compete with this? And the man of God sat there and all of a sudden a light went through his soul and he said this out loud. This was in the song now. He said, the real comparison is not God's power versus Satan's. It's not God's kingdom and Satan's lair. The real comparison is the condition of your soul and the condition of mine. Yeah. He said, the day will come when you'll be lying in bed wheezing like a dying animal. And in that moment, in that time, in that moment, who are you going to call when those spirits, those dark spirits that you worshiped, that you trusted in, came after your soul? Who are you going to call on that day? He said, I know who, what I would say. I am bought with the blood of Jesus. Let me go. So are you willing to die? You politicians. You act like you're going to live forever while you age in front of everybody's face. You really think that you've discovered something that you're going to escape judgment and eternity? That would have to be the biggest fool of all. To look at your hands and know that and think you wasn't made by some kind of intelligent design. And say God doesn't exist or rewrite him in your image so that you can keep plundering the people. Do you really think people don't know? That there's no way you could be making these power moves unless you Republicans and you Democrats are not on the same page. There is no way anybody could be getting away with this unless everybody's in agreement. You're all the same stripes of the same horse. You're on the same back of the same zebra. That's who you are. There's only a handful of people that's left. that really believe in what they're doing. I call on you handful. The Lord asked me this question to said to ask you this. All of you politicians in this country, now I, I can't speak for every country right now, but maybe I am. I'm speaking for some and to some. But as for this country right here, you act like there is no God. You, are, you have absolutely forsaken the God that created this nation. You act like he doesn't even exist anymore. You act like that it's all just a figment of somebody's imagination. 
You act like the Declaration of Independence don't mean squat. You act like it was just somebody who was just sitting around in a tavern drinking ale that decided to write something to deceive people with. You damned fools. You sit out there and you look at these things and you won't even stand up with any kind of backbone and stand for a nation that God gave you, prospered you, your children, your grandchildren, your, pros uh, your posterity to come, and you still act like there is no God. Well, the scripture says only a fool says in his heart there is no God. Hand me that Bible. The Word of God says it. What is the Word of God? This. This is the Word of God. No argument. End of argument. Right here is the Word of the living God. God in written form. Don't come at me with a bunch of trash. This is the written Word of God. This is God in written form. This is the Word. You got mad when Donald Trump stood up and said, we're going to go by this. That's what you got angry about. You bunch of occultists that's sucking off the teeth of Satan himself. You got mad at that. So you call us occultists? Why did you bring in the Arch of Baal to the, to the park right across from where Brett Kavanaugh was being, going, having to be put through that circus? Why did you bring the Arch of Baal out in Central Park when Hillary Clinton was running for president? Why did you bring the Arch of Baal to London and you, Boris Johnson? Why did you dedicate it? Why was there one dedicated in Italy? Why did you print 3D print a thousand of them? Arches of Baal? Baal? Why wasn't it any other statue? Why wasn't it anything else? Because I know who you are and you do too. But I'm talking to politicians that still have some kind of righteousness down in them somewhere. You act like there's no God. And you may meet him sooner than you've ever imagined. Because you're still just flesh and blood and bone. And you're susceptible. And when this devil's through with you, he'll wring you out like a wet wash rag and throw you over to the side. You want to know how close you are? I remember when I heard a conversation and I saw the men sitting there in a room and one had a balding head and a little bit of hair on the sides. And they said, what are we going to, who can we use now? Who can we use now? This was a while back. And one of them said, let's use Carrie. John Kerry, he's no good for nothing anymore. Let's throw him out there. It wasn't 21 days he was caught for talking the secrets of Israel to Iran. And that's what that leader looks like. And I heard the conversation. Now you think on these things. I heard the conversation of the ship stuck in the Suez. I heard what it was for. God is revealing the secrets discussed in bedchambers to his prophets, his servants, the prophets. Because this is the time of transition from Elijah to Elisha. And the, tra the prophecies of Elijah must come to pass as the prophecies of Elisha move forward. And we're in that time. And like it or not, you are too. You know, I'm making an appeal today and giving a warning at the same time. Did you know that Pharaoh was offered something that other leaders were not? We don't really have a record that a lot was ever offered, I guess. I've only seen it in that one story so far. When the Lord told him, I will make your, I raised you up to make your name great. I've raised you up to do this, and you he would have went down in history as the Pharaoh who delivered God's people. But he wouldn't do it. So he was slated to have a great famous name, and it was going to come to pass whether it was for good or to go down in history as destruct, destroyed. He chose the latter, and you know what happened.
This is where politicians are today. This is where they are. In the time, soon the time of the lion will arrive. Soon the bear will go back into hibernation. But I'm going to tell you something. Oh, you who sits in the dark room and controls political entities, and you think you have all this power, God knows every thought you have. He knows every time you blow mucus from your nose. He knows every time you do all the things men do. This should be your reminder that you are a man. And you are the prince of Tyrus. And you will be shown you are a man. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you back to the 11th hour today. And they tell me that today, and it's amazing, isn't it, that we started talking about all these false gods and these false narratives and things that people are, you know, are doing and, and uh, uh, consulting the occult and all of that. And they tell me today, you know, we are in a, look, look, see, I don't know if you can see my sword laying up here, but we are in a spiritual war. We're still in this battle. We're still in this spiritual war. And I want to tell you something. We are on the winning team. We're on the winning side. But we were talking about all these occultist ideas and everything. And now they tell me that today there's little tarot card symbols up in the corner of everybody's YouTube channel. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. You better take heed who's doing that. And whoever's put that up and ever on, on YouTube, now that has to come from YouTube, doesn't it? Has to come from, well, where does it come from? It comes from somewhere. Everybody's putting it up on all of their, uh, in their corners, but it's not, we don't do that. So if it shows up on anything we're doing, you know it's a lie straight out of hell. Because uh, I guarantee you, my friends, I don't deal with such trash. Hallelujah. So, um, you know. They tell me, no, it's not YouTube that did it, so I don't know who's doing it. But I know we ain't. <laughs> How about that? Oh, they did. So YouTube made their logo today with tarot cards. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If I had tarot cards in my hand right here on international broadcast, I would rip them in half so you could see them being torn. And if you think, you think prophets are afraid of occult people. You just absolutely need to come out of your hiding place. Now, I want to show you something. Um, no weapon formed against us can prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we will condemn it. We'll prove it to be in the wrong. This is our heritage. Why? Because we're the servants of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know the 11th hour family, everybody that watches the 11th hour is prophetic minded, Roxanne. They're prophetic minded. And so I need you to just join your faith in with me and declare no fear, no fear, no fear and no care. And we're going to stand up and declare the word of the living God no matter what. Hallelujah. Now, I, uh, I heard this and I'm just going to give you a few things here today, but I'm so honored to be with you today on the 11th hour. It's good to be here. If some of you are wondering where the other parts of the team are, some of them are in another state right now, so across several states, and we'll be joining them soon for a, a great outreach meeting. And so uh, nobody has left us. <laughs> We're just... <laughs> We're just doing several things right now. All because you partners, you and the Lord made all of this possible. And so that's why, that's why, Lord, you're entitled to such anointings and blessings because you, you just fearlessly give and fearlessly pray and fearlessly stand all around the world. I have no way of telling you how much I love all of you around the world, not just in this nation, but around the world. I love the nations. 
I love, I love the peoples. I love to, to interact with them, talk to them, and see them. Hallelujah. But the Lord asked me something this morning before daylight. He said to ask this on the air. He said, how long will everyone pretend that the jackal won the election? How long will everyone pretend that this actually took place? How long will this go on? The Lord said, you can't just give your nation away. If you do, you will not get it back. Hallelujah. So how long? And most of that, I think that's directed toward the politicians that are just going to pretend this and pretend this. Hand me my staff, Roxanne. So I will ask again, and I, I had, I sensed I needed this in my hand right now. How long, how long will you, politicians, people in power, how long will you pretend that the jackal won? How long will you do that? You can't just give your nation away. You can't just give it away. You won't get it back. Hallelujah. And the great destiny of this nation, the great destiny is yet to be seen in its fullest. Hallelujah. Now, in our great nation here in the U.S., I, I, I heard this. Now, I have no other word beyond it. But since this is a day of intercession, I'm asking the intercessors to pray because I saw Texas. I saw something about Texas, something, and it's not, we need to be praying right now. It's almost as if a crossroads has come, and Texas is in the crosshairs of something. I, maybe I'm just, I'm just talking out of my spirit right now. But I saw that. This was all before daylight. I wrote all of this in the dark, just writing. And Texas. Then I, I thought in a fleeting moment, uh, Paris. And then in a fleeting moment, I thought, did I hear New Jersey? And the Lord said, no. And he brought it back to me, Rhode Island. There's something about Rhode Island that's up in the spirit. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray, intercessors, pray for Rhode Island. And I wrote it down, Rhode Island, and I wrote, yes, Rhode Island. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this and put out your prophetic catchers. The Lord said, said this to me, come against ambushments. Now, listen close to that. Come against ambushments. Then he said this, remember, am hyphen bush hyphen mints. Come against any Ambushments. Hallelujah. That'll mean something to someone. You get your prophetic ears out. I have to speak in code a lot or they would stop us from coming to you. If their algorithms, their stalkers, their death stalkers, they unleash against God's people. That's called algorithms in the tech world. They're death stalkers. They are... They are, uh, I think the native people would have called them skinwalkers in the tech world. They are coming against God's people, stalking them with death. I believe that's the equivalent of what the Navajo and people used to refer to as these demonic things. And uh, just hear what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's anything else the Lord said. We're in the time of the big lie. 
then how deep does that lie run? Is the vote now simply the illusion of a vote? Oh, wait a minute. Now, that's big right there. We're in the time of the big lies. And since we're in the time of the big lie, how deep does that lie run? Huh. Is the vote now simply the illusion of a vote? Hmm. That they are just getting people used to hearing about things that they're bringing to pass. Uh, but the vote is already done. Are they doing that just to hear? I mean, just to convince people they start the narrative. Well, these people are already on board to vote for this. But, but the vote's already done. And they keep people in the illusion that they have a freedom of a vote. Could the lie have run that deep? You have to ask yourself these questions. Is the lie this deep? If you're looking at world powers that would stage a world war almost and almost bring about a world war, would you, would you not think that they would keep people in the illusion of freedom? It's just the illusion of freedom. You know, the illusion of, of freedom would be the most dangerous kind of freedom. I believe the same, and people say, well, what, what was that you said about the, those uh, skinwalker things? That's something in the Native American world they used to talk about, and it was in the dark occultic world. I believe that's the equivalent of the same demonic powers that's in these algorithms that they're using against people. That's what I think. Hallelujah. Because demons are demons, and there's, you know, uh, there's, there's several things that's common to a man. One is seed time and harvest. Another, as a friend of mine told me, said, remember, technology is common to every man. So demons are going to work their way into every situation of a man's life where they can kind of control it. So you're looking at demonic algorithms. So I have to become a code talker. I have to be a code talker to operate in these times. Hallelujah. So I want you to, uh, let's see if there's something else the Lord wanted me to say. It's been a, already been a good 11th hour. Hallelujah. Remember these day, this day of intercession. Pray for Texas. Pray for Rhode Island. Pray. Amen. So the Lord said, and I want to read this one more time. We're in the time of the big lie. Then how deep does that lie run? Is the vote now simply the illusion of a vote? Yet they are just getting people used to hearing about things concerning things they're doing, getting them to accept it, but the vote is really already done. Could that be the case? You have to ask yourself this question. Hallelujah. Could it be? Yes, it could be. So in the time of the big lie, we have to bring forth the truth, and we have to tell the truth, and only the Lord knows the truth. And the Scripture said, Thy word, Lord, is truth. This is the truth. And so inside it is the answer to everything. See, what they don't really understand is, is inside the pages of this book, within the words of this book, between the lines, in the sentences, in the depth of the stories, is every decision these wicked people are making. It's already foretold. It's already told within the pages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I guess that's all today. That's uh, at least for this 11th hour. And this has been a good 11th hour, hasn't it? And it's been a heavy one, and I, I really do enjoy these 11th hours that are totally unplanned. When we just walk out, well, they're always unplanned, but I mean today was just, we had no idea where we were headed. And the Lord said, pray. He said, 
have Roxanne to just start praying. And he let us hear the prayers that are going on in the backgrounds in all the nations. While the praise is going up, the, all this is happening, you can hear them praying in the backgrounds. Here, I don't know if it came across as powerful to you as it did here, but man, it was strong in the fortress here. Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do is begin to build you a fortress. I want you to begin in prayer and in the word to build you a fortress where you are. Have you a place that you can enter into that no one can, can bother you, no one can get to you, no, uh, and you go in and pray. And you go in and you can seek the Lord and you can sound out. Whether you have a voice on, on around the world on the air and on streaming or television or anything or radio or podcast, it makes no difference. When you as a, uh, as a prophetic warrior begin to speak out in the spirit, it goes into the air. And a bird of the air can carry the voice. And it can be carried on the wind of the spirit from here all the, from where you are all the way to where we are, from where we are all the way to where you are, and all around the world, and someone who's never even really seen television could pick it up in their spirit. Hallelujah. So it, it, it I said it, it doesn't make any difference. It, it does make a difference, but what I'm saying is, is that, that even if you don't, if you're not on the air and technology-wise, God in his spirit can carry your voice everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to get ready. We, we're going to, we have any praise reports, anything we need to tell today? You know, we, do we? Krista said we have a lot of praise reports coming in from Sunday at Church International. Man, that was Pentecost Sunday, and the Lord just Pentecost. I mean, he just brought the Pentecost into the room, and the next thing you know, we, we spent hours and hours just watching God deliver and heal and deliver people. So we'll be bringing some of those reports to you also. But come on, Roxanne, and let's give this one. All right. And just just. Five, ten seconds ago, the Lord brought something to my remembrance. Um, I had got a, a phone call in the office a while back, back when COVID was at its peak and everyone was, you know, needing prayer for being in the hospital. And this precious lady called and she said, and this is like the importance of praying in the Holy Ghost and singing in the Holy Ghost and building your, your faith up that way. She said that she was a faithful watcher of the 11th hour and she had it playing in her hospital room. She was very sick with COVID and COVID pneumonia and it didn't look really good. And she said, um, at one point, I, would, I was singing in tongues, and she said, the Lord said, sing with her, and she mimicked what I was saying, and she was listening to Prophet Robin sing in tongues, and Pastor Robin, and, and all of a sudden, she would begin to mimic each week, um, singing in tongues, and she said, every day, she got stronger and stronger and stronger from that point, and she walked out of that hospital fully healed, Hallelujah. with no, no long-term effects, anything. She was completely healed. I said, that is the importance of, of praying in the Holy Ghost and building up your faith that way. So she was, she was a precious lady, and praise God for her healing that she, she came out of that. But also, um, one of our partners had said she had $27 in her bank account after paying bills, and last week she gave her tithe and got a $373 check in the mail. And she said, tithing works for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, that. see, that is, and also praying in the spirit like that, what you do is activate your spirit. You get your spirit, you bring it online, and you start activating your spirit. So it, the earlier you can pray in tongues when you get up, uh, you, 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 you get your spirit engaged for, for all day. Hallelujah. Well, you, are you coming to receive the offering today? Come on and, and give the people an opportunity to give if they'd like to give. And um, it's going to be a good day today. <laughs> Praise God. Any day, you know, I, I grew up hearing this, any day above ground's a good day. Why? Because you've still got an opportunity to make a difference in this world. Amen. Amen. So as long as you're breathing, there's hope. 
There you have hope. Jesus is your hope and you have it every single day. So don't lose hope. You can't. Yeah, if you if you lose hope, you've lost Jesus, which means you've ran away from him somewhere. So today, you know, I just feel that urgency. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life today, today is the day of salvation. And and the Lord, he makes it so simple. He you know, he's so easy to call out to. He is so easy and he's he's right there. He is right there. You know, a friend of mine the other night said, said, uh, said, was talking about God finding her. And, and she said, well, uh, she said, well, he found me. And I said, well, actually, I said, you found him. I said, he knew where you were the whole time. I said, you, you're the one that, that reached out to find him. So today, all you have to do is just, you know, the Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's it. So today, all you have to say is, Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, and I believe that God raised you from the dead. And if you want to add something to that, just for, for your sake, say now, take my life and do something with it. And from this day forward, if you said that, you are a child of God, and you are a part of the greatest family you can ever be a part of. And you, I'm telling you, you have the opportunity to be a history maker during this time. Praise God. I didn't know I was going to say all that, but it just, you get behind this pulpit right here and the, the preach will just come on you, you know. And it has been a great 11th hour. And I did want to just share this with you real quick. It, you know, you didn't know. Now, he didn't know this. My my dad doesn't really, he, he pays attention to the prophetic side of sports. But I watch sports. I watch sports a lot. Well, right now we're in the softball World Series. And last night determined who was going into the final series. Well, it was between Oklahoma State and Texas. And Oklahoma State was winning 5 nothing. Now, this is softball. Those of you that know baseball, softball, you understand how hard it is to get five and up. That's that's difficult. I wake up this morning to a text because I didn't finish the whole game. I woke up to a text that said that Texas came back to win it six to five. So God's doing something with Texas. It's on the scene, when you said that, I looked at Katie and I said, he doesn't know that Texas is in the softball world series. So so just a confirmation, be on the lookout, something about Texas. Pray for Texas and that God does what he, he wants to do. And, you know, the reason why I feel like I just don't have a lot for the offering is not because the Lord hasn't given anything, but because if you'll listen back to worship, you'll listen back to that music, God gave the word for the offering in in that. When mom began to prophesy, she began to sing, she began to talk about, you know, you're you're trying to make my people lack. You know, what what did she what was that word? She said it was a specific word about um basically challenging God by trying to make his people like. But she began to talk about, the word began to talk about being a tither and how if you'll continue to tithe, this is how this is how you'll beat it. This is how you'll win. So go back and listen to that afterwards. She began, when she did it, I said, there's the offering right there. The God spoke in that telling you, do not fear. Just like he told me, my system works in the best of times and the worst of times. So today, continue. You have hope. You've made Jesus the Lord of your life. You've got hope in your life. I'm telling you today, if you'll continue to tithe, you'll continue to give, put in the principles that he has set in motion. There, there's no devil in hell that can stop you. They cannot stop you. The only person in this world, and this comes from being a fitness instructor too, the only person in the world that can stop you is you, is you. So guess what? 
Don't stop. If the enemy was going to stop you, he'd have done it a long time ago. He'd have done it the minute you got saved. but And he'd have stopped you before you got to the altar or before you let it come out of your mouth. But he didn't. You're still here. He can't stop you. So you keep moving. God's in your future calling you forward. And you've got a job to do with the rest of us. Let's pray today over your giving. Luke 6, 38, as you, as you have your seed, you hold it up, whether it's on your phone, whether it's physically, it don't matter. You hold that up. Or whether you've already given, just raise your hands in the air today like you just don't care. Amen. That's, that's going to be our thing. Wave your hands because we just don't care. Thank, I know my 11th hour family got that. I know they did. So Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it. I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a tither, Malachi, Malachi 3.10 is our promise. Malachi 3.10, say it with me. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. You say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. So, and all of you Phoenix partners, they're coming to see you this weekend. They'll be there. So go to the Robin D. Bullock website, robindbullock.com. Find out all the information there. We will, I'm sure it will be live streamed. So uh, pay attention to that. And also, we want to uh, give a shout out to John on the drums today. John's usually behind the scenes, and today he filled in. That was my not so little brother on the drums. So, so we're using everybody. Yeah. Amen. Well. You know, you're talking about. You said using everybody. You know, the Lord told Mom. She told. He told Robin, and uh, she said it. He said, "You're not." Uh, a ministering family he said you're a family of ministry and so that's there's a big difference in that amen well you know Krista told you how to receive Jesus and it's just that simple so now you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost you need to ask Jesus to baptize you in the mighty Holy Ghost you know the the scripture is talking about what really happened to you when you got saved is the Holy Ghost baptized you in Jesus. But when you get baptized in fire, Jesus baptized you in the Holy Ghost. So you need to ask him that right now. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Now you just simply say this, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Come on, some of you wanted to speak in tongues for so long. This is your day now. Come on, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. I ask you, sir, to baptize me in the mighty Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say. Now, just start thanking him for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for baptizing me in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, that you have baptized me in your mighty spirit. Thank you, Lord. And now just start saying those other sounds you hear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Man, that's a powerhouse just waiting to be released, waiting to come up. You know, Jesus, when the Spirit came on him bodily like a dove, he, you know, he didn't do one thing in ministry until that happened. Did you know that? 
He didn't do one thing in ministry until he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then the next time you see him, he's out beating the devil up out in the wilderness, and then he goes and turns water into wine. I mean, <laughs> think of that. He comes back down, and he starts to meet the elements in his own mind, and he's, he's, he speaks to the, or, or tells the servants what to do, and the water becomes wine at the wedding at Cana. The next time he deals with water, he's already met his mind there and his, and his call. He had to just stand and believe his own, who he was, what he heard his father say. And then the next time he deals with water, he's calming winds and waves. And the next time he deals with water, he's walking across it. Everything he just, he just, one thing was an ascension over another. Hallelujah. It's the same way with sickness. He dealt with Peter's a mother-in-law rebuked a fever. He healed the leper, rotting flesh, and then he replaced eyeballs. And then at the man who he sent to Siloam to wash. And then, then you see him dealing with death. Oh, yeah. He deals with someone who was, you know, uh, dead a few minutes, uh, J. Iris' daughter. Then he goes and sees someone who's dead a few hours, the widow at Nain's son. And then he goes to Lazarus' tomb, dead four days. One's an ascension over the other. So once you begin and the mighty spirit of God baptizes you, it's the same Holy Ghost that lives in you. He just comes up on you. He comes up on you. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's no stupid little uh, tarot card. We should call them tarot cards because all they're going to do is bring tarot into your life. Uh, there's nothing, nothing in a card like that that could produce that kind of power. Hallelujah. So I challenge all the witches and warlocks today to get born again. Get saved. Why don't you walk into real power? You're afraid of the truth or you would have already done it. You're afraid that you're going to run into a power that what you know can't stand up to. And that's exactly what's going to happen. You know, one of the most powerful warlocks that ever that was ever in my, in, in my generation was in California. And I'll never forget when uh, Jeff Fenhope led him to the Lord. I think Jeff led him to the Lord. And, and uh, you know, Jeff played Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ Superstar, the Broadway play. He was the original. And uh, when they put that back together, that thing, you know, and in that, Judas resurrected, not Jesus. But they couldn't get the original cast, and they couldn't, they couldn't advertise it as the original cast because Jeff got saved and wouldn't go back and do it. <laughs> and so he dealt with that warlock. And you know what that, that young man said? He was just a young man. He said, all I want is the truth. He said, if the truth is getting down on my knees and drinking water out of a bucket like a dog, I'll do it. All I want is the truth. And, and he was presented the truth of Jesus. And when he saw that and he saw what, how God loved him and he saw what Jesus had done, he received the Lord and became a powerful believer after that. Hallelujah. So all of you that dabble in the occult, all of you that are, are, that are ready to put your life in the hands of something more than a three-by-five index card, that has an image on it somewhere. I mean, is that really what you're going to trust your life to? Well, I'm going to tell you, why don't you just lay that over to the side and just say, Jesus, if you're real, show me. Just show me you're real. Show me how much you love me, Lord. You know, there's been Islamic people before that prayed that, and Jesus came in their room and appeared to them. However he wants to do that is just fine with me. I mean, I'll be fine with you. But you ought to just say, Jesus, come in my heart. Free me from this. I'm tired of bowing down to a three-by-five index card. I'm tired of bowing to this thing. You know, something that you can go pay four ninety five dollars for somewhere, and you're going to really put your trust in that. No, I challenge you. Accept Jesus as your Lord. And know who the real God of creation is. Hallelujah. Well, it's been good to be with you today on the 11th hour. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you. We love you. Yeah, I, you know, I, I will. I'll do that. Lord, the Lord just, he told me, you know, it's time. We are, we are, uh, 
we are going to, we need a, an airplane now. And, and we have, you know, it's not that we can't go get it. We need to know the right one. We need our partners to pray that the right one would be sent to us and that the right one, we would know where it's at, what to do. Because we're in dangerous times and we need to be able to get somewhere kind of stealthily and we need to be able to get back and we need to be able to go in and minister. We need to be able to take the prophetic word anywhere we need to go. And, uh, you know, hallelujah. I mean, believe me, I'll get on my motorcycle and take it if I have to somewhere. I mean, I, I, will, I will do that. Hallelujah. I would ride a horse to do it if I had to do it. But we're in a world where we need to move fast. Amen. So I'm calling on our partners to pray with us now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had a, we had a prophetic word years ago given to us and said, uh, y'all can have a bus if you want it, but robins were meant to fly. So now I see what they mean. We have to get there quickly now. This is a real dangerous time, and we want to be able to minister the life of God. Amen? Well, until next time we gather together right here around God's Word, I want you to remember, never forget that God is. And Jesus loves you. We love you too. God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom.